reporting from our virtual uh, studio, live from ISC, but not live from Frankfurt. And we are here today with uh, Jack Nogueira from the University of Tennessee, and he's also doing a little bit in benchmarking, top 500, and that kind of stuff. So, welcome, Jack. Nice to see you, Ed. Okay, so uh, 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 to start with, um, well, people are always interested in the big machines and the, 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 the top machines. So what, uh, what's there uh, new on this uh, front? Well, I guess the big exciting news is a new number one system. So the uh, Japanese uh, system, a machine called Fugaku, uh, Fujitsu made, uh, sitting in Kobe at the Riken uh, Institute will be the new number one machine today. Uh, it, uh, it's a big machine based on uh, Fujitsu's implementation of the uh, ARM processor. It uh, has um, um, a LINPAC number of 415 petaflops. Its peak performance is 514 petaflops. It has uh, 152,000 nodes in it. Each node is composed of one of these ARM processors. There are no accelerators, so it's not an accelerated machine. It's based on ARM, but the version of ARM has a uh, vector extension associated with it uh, to do vector operations. Uh, it's a very impressive system. It's impressive in a number of ways. It's, uh, first, it's received a uh, very high um, um, efficiency for uh, for Linpack, it has um, uh, it has a very high efficiency for other benchmarks as well. So um, uh, just looking at the number one machine now, the Fugaku 415. The number two machine is the Summit uh, machine at Oak Ridge, and that machine, by comparison, has 149 petaflops for the LINPAC benchmark. So it's, 100, it's 415 compared to 149 petaflops. So that's the difference between number one and number two uh, in terms of the uh, performance. It's, um, um, there's another benchmark we have called HPCG. HPCG um, is much more memory intensive. So it stresses the memory of these machines a great deal. And, um, for the HPCG benchmark, Fugaku achieved uh, 13 petaflops. So 13 petaflops puts it at number one for the HPCG benchmark. By comparison, the summit, which was also at number one previously, it achieved 2.93 petaflops. So the difference is 13 compared to 2.9 petaflops in the number one and number two machine. The, um, um, so that's a, that's a big difference. Uh, Fugaku achieved 2.5% of the theoretical peak performance for HPCG. Uh, Summit achieved 1.3% of its peak performance uh, for HPCG. So those are sort of the, um, uh, the high-end benchmark numbers. Uh, there's one more benchmark that we've run on this machine, and that's called the... Um, HPL AI benchmark. So mm -hmm. HPL AI is intended to stress short precision. It runs the LIMPAC benchmark. It carries out a factorization using 16-bit floating point arithmetic and then uses some mathematical techniques to enhance the performance to 64-bit performance. So the, um, the performance for Fugaku for the HP LAI benchmark was at 1.4 exaflops. So they've actually reached over an exaflop for that benchmark. And by comparison, Summit uh, achieved 0.55 exaflops. You know, quite a bit of difference between those two uh, machines, roughly a factor of three in terms of performance for that benchmark. So um, the Japanese with Fugaku have put together a very impressive computer it's uh, large scale, uh, uses no accelerators, is uh, very good for a number of applications, having very fast, very good interconnect between the processors, has very high bandwidth, 
has uh, quite a bit of fast memory on this machine. It um, is uh, up and running today. They have a number of um, applications that have actually been run on this machine already. Uh, it just started operation, I think, fully uh, in May. So just in the past um, month, the, the machine has come up fully and they're, they're getting uh, real applications run on the, um, on the system. So it's a very impressive uh, machine and uh, we're looking forward to seeing how it uh, performs on uh, real scientific problems. Yeah, it's, it, it sounds like a really impressive machine. I mean, the, uh, um, it, it, in, in the US, when I understand correctly, it, we have to, to wait until next year un, until there will be a fast machine. Uh, the Frontera. In in Europe, we have the Euro HPC machines, but the pre exascale machines. But when I look at these specifications, I don't see that they will be able to uh, to jump to the the first place. Uh, well, what's your opinion? When the, well, when the uh, DOE exascale machines come online, they will. Um, perhaps be in a position to be uh, ahead of the Fugaku machine. So DOE yep. has three, three computers at Exascale. They have the uh, Aurora machine, uh, the one um, that's going into Argonne Frontier, which is coming into Oak Ridge, and then another machine going into Lawrence Livermore um, uh, lab, El Capitan. So those are the three Exascale machines. Uh, but those are not due until next year. So we have at least yep. one year to wait for those machines. Yeah, but uh, at, but the, th the three big Euro HPC machines, the machines in Europe, uh, they are also not due for before the end of the year or perhaps early next year in production. So, but did, did you look at the specifications of those machines? I have not uh, looked in detail at the spec for the European systems. Um, you know, these machines are um, the specs are interesting, but uh, until the machine is actually put in place and running and you can test out on a benchmark, it's, um, uh, it's all academic is the way I look at that. You really need a machine in place uh, to run uh, to get a full appreciation for how well it's going to perform. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so you mentioned already that the Fujaku system is quite interesting from an architectural point of view. Um, there are also lots of other uh, architectural changes. Um, can you tell a little bit about that in, in general in HPC, not only for the Fujaku? But, uh... um, well, let's see, what, what do we have here? Um, so what we see is large numbers of nodes. You know, many machines use accelerators, that's continuing. Um, uh, the uh, interconnects are getting faster. Uh, there's use of more uh, high-speed memory associated with its stacked uh, memory. Uh, the Fugaku machine is using all stack memory. So all memory is on, uh, on chip stacked and very, uh, very high bandwidth associated with it. Uh, we see these machines with um, uh, very good injection bandwidth uh, across the networks. Um, uh, we see machines now with uh, not only 64-bit arithmetic, and 32-bit arithmetic, but also 16-bit arithmetic. So Fugaku is a machine like Summit, has native 16-bit floating point arithmetic, uh, which is um, uh, potentially useful uh, for some applications, not all, but some applications. Uh, it's there, I think, primarily because of the um, uh, move towards uh, machine learning uh, that can get away with um, using that short precision. So I would say the, um, the, the movement is in that direction of uh, providing for different, um, uh, different kinds of um, arithmetic, floating point arithmetic, and also integer arithmetic. I believe the uh, Fugaku machine goes down to even lower for integer-based arithmetic, again, to stress the uh, need for machine learning and AI. And um, uh, all of these machines are very large and have uh, considerable memory, uh, considerable um, uh, energy requirements uh, associated with, uh, with them. So that's something else to be, um, uh, that has to be taken into consideration. Okay. Um, if you look at the, uh, you mentioned already three benchmarks. Um, 
will that remain the trend to have separate, several separate benchmarks to look at the different aspects of machines? Well, I think it makes sense to have many benchmarks. Uh, you know, the bench, the best, the most important benchmarks are the applications that you run on your machines. Yep. So, you know, getting application, getting benchmarks that match applications are the are the right thing. Some of the benchmarks that we have are historical. Limpack is a, an example of a historic benchmark. It provides some insight, but it shouldn't be used to really judge solely how fast the machine is going to run on modern applications. And in order to do that, we need to have some smaller version of the applications that we can run on these machines to get a better handle on how they're going to perform. So uh, things like um, Limpack give just a, a hint of what the capabilities are, and uh, we may, um, uh, you know, we may see quite different trends when we have real applications running on these machines. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you look at the, uh, I don't know what the cost is of the, the new Japanese machine. Uh, perhaps that will be revealed at one point in time. Maybe. But I can remember the time when a definition of a supercomputer was a machine that cost 25 million euros. Uh, no, at that time it was only dollars. There were no euros. <laughs> so a machine, a supercomputer is a machine that costs 25 million euro, uh, dollar, dollar. I need to say dollar. But now it seems that if you don't have 500 million dollar, you cannot buy a supercomputer. Is that also a trend or is that just for the big machines and it's a real high performance computing somewhere else? Well, if you want to be number one, I think that's a good, um, that's a good number, a good round number to think about. The, yeah. three, the three DOE machines that I mentioned, um, they have a price tag of $600 million each machine. Yeah. So it's $1.8 billion is going to be spent on those three machines. And that's just the hardware. That doesn't include the software. It doesn't include the applications. It doesn't include the ongoing running of those machines. So all yeah. of that has to be taken into account. So being number one is an expensive proposition, but um, you know these machines have tremendous capability. You buy a machine, um, so you can carry out leading edge science and uh, having the capability to carry out leading edge science is really what's driving uh, the requirements and the needs for these uh, computers. I, you know, I, I equate these machines to things like our most sophisticated instruments. So we think about uh, things like the Hubble telescope, you know, that's a machine which uh, is up there in space. I don't know the exact price tag, but it's probably on the order of a billion dollars and it's yep. providing you know, a tremendous wealth of information. Uh, new science is being learned and discovered as a result of that. And the same thing is true of these uh, supercomputers. So we should think of them as very large instruments, uh, which we use to push back the frontiers of uh, science. And paying that price is just part of the uh, cost of doing science at the leading edge. OK. Um we are not at the uh, I I Frankfurt, so that, uh, most of us don't travel that much these days um, anymore. Um, of course, that's a, a, a good thing on the one, one hand, but a bad thing on the other. So um, uh, can you keep on doing your work uh, while not traveling so much? Uh, well, it's, uh, it's an adjustment, I have to say. Um, you know, I've, I was known for doing quite a bit of travel. Um, but now my travel, uh, my speed is zero miles per hour. <laughs> okay. I used to have a very high miles per hour uh, number. And um, it's, a, it's a matter of getting used to it. Can I do the work? Sure, I can do the work from here. So I'm sitting in my uh, office uh, in my home in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. And I've been here since, um, I think, the end of February. And um, I've been able to um, uh, be semi-productive, I would say in this position, how long it's going to last, uh, how long it's going to keep on. I can't predict, of course, none of us can. Uh, but uh, you know, I'm prepared to stay here until it becomes safe outside and we again resume travel. I'm sure at some point uh, we'll again resume travel and be perhaps even next year in Frankfurt. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking forward to see you again uh, in Frankfurt or at some, uh, so, so, some other place because these meetings are nice, but uh, also a lot of problems. So yeah, and it's much nicer to see in person. 
So I hope I to see lot, you then. A lot, more, a lot more happens in person, I have to say. So I look forward to seeing you again too, Ed, in, in Frankfurt. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you very much. You bet. Take care, cheers. Okay, for Premier Magazine, this was Abdemon Report.